So this afternoon you find me on my sewing room floor and I'm having a bit of an experimentational afternoon which doesn't happen very often. Normally I'm so snowed under with work that I don't get a chance, especially during the week, to, to have an afternoon where I just get to sit and um, essentially throw stuff on the mannequin and have a play around and, and see where I end up. So I am heading to Fantasy Forest Festival in a few weeks time um, and I've been umming and ahhing about what to wear, um, whether to just rewear something previously because I've not really had time to certainly think about and plan for a, a big new outfit that I could wear at the event. You know me, timing is always, making stuff for myself always has to take second place behind behind my custom, custom orders. Um, so. Yeah, so I wasn't really sure what I was going to wear, um, although I did have kind of some loose ideas in the background for doing something involving... Oh, drop, drop, drop the camera. Something involving um, these stays, um, which you would have seen before. They're the 18th century stays I made previously for my yeah, uh, Sleepy Hollow um, cosplay. Katrina dress, which is obviously an 18th century gowns and these are 18th century stays. Um, but I very much wanted them to be, you know, they're really pretty. They're, they're the outer fabric here and the binding is all silk. So, you know, they're really, really pretty and I wanted to be able to utilize them and wear them for other outfits. Um, hence why I am now experimenting, as you can see. Um, the other thing was, while I was on holiday, I picked up a pair of fairy wings, as you do. <laughs> um, yes, I bought a pair of electronic kiddies dress-up um, fairy wings from Disney, um, at Disneyland in California. Um, but I have to say, they are amazing quality for kiddies dress up wings and um, they were only she says $27 about $30 um, with tax and um, yeah they're really good quality um, and I will show you a bit more footage of them as well because uh, I've essentially I've, I've pulled them to bits and I've painted the plastic surround I didn't want Tinkerbell green I was well I was nearly gonna go for that's what started the idea when I picked up these wings that I might do a or try to do a steampunk Tinkerbell um, but I don't have a lot of green I don't wear a lot of green to be honest and yeah it would mean making something completely 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 from scratch um, because I don't own anything particularly green um, whereas I'm normally a blue person <laughs> um, so I'm kind of now veering towards a kind of a, a clockwork blue fairy of some description um, as I say I don't know where this is going to end up this is just a big experiment um, and yeah, I've just been kind of pootling along, thinking of ideas um, over the last sort of couple of weeks since we've been back from holiday. And it's just now things are starting to fall into place. I've been scouring Pinterest um, for ideas for kind of steampunk fairies, um, that, that, that kind of sort of aesthetic. Um, and I stumbled across um, some images, which I shall put in now, um, which I really love. They're kind of this kind of whimsical, um, fairy look um but they incorporate kind of a cage crinoline and i kind of like the idea of on some of these images the way the kind of the flowers are coming out um because one of the things that's kind of on trend at the moment in in gardening circles weirdly is um uh, using kind of um kind of vintage style bird cages um as planters and then you get the flowers kind of trail through the the, the mesh and the wire of the cage you know and it looks really pretty um so i'm kind of playing on that aesthetic um that it kind of looks like a fairy that's kind of grown out of a um out of a cage kind of thing i don't know it's <laughs> it's a little bit a little bit weird and whimsical but hey this is this is fantasy forest anything goes so um yeah and it's it's a little bit um, very weird and whimsical for me, as you know, I do like to um, kind of keep my stuff on a slightly more historical kind of bend and I guess I'm kind of doing that with the stays and the crinoline, which are completely different eras, but we'll, we'll come on to that momentarily. Um, so yeah, so at the moment I'm just playing around with some things on the mannequin just to see if my initial ideas are coming to life. So yes, yeah, so the stays are on the mannequin, um, so I've got is a, is a kind of a background colour um, just to give for the overall um, kind of um, look um, but then I've got this this crinoline which believe it or not is from I Ikea of all places um, quite a few years ago bizarrely Ikea did this kind of range of children's dress-up clothes um, 
part of which was this uh, acrinoline petticoat, which is what this is. So yes, this is from a kiddies um, kind of fancy dress uh, crinoline. Um, but it was cheap and cheerful. It's actually pretty good quality. Um, it's got um, good, quite good quality um, tape uh, used in it. The boning inside it is it's plastic tubing. Um, but you know, do you know what? It does the job and it's a really good shape. And me being petite as I am, I can get away with it because it fits me just, I can just squeeze into it. And um, it's got an elasticated waist um, hidden up under there. Um, so yeah, um, so I've kind of, I've, I bought it and I've kept it in my wardrobe kind of as a, a quick and easy go-to if I wanted um, extra volume or anything under sort of skirts and petticoats. Um, but I've never really worn it very much, to be honest with you. Um, and yeah, so it's just kind of sat in my wardrobe. Um, and then I kind of had this idea of using this kind of crinoline um, for this kind of clockwork fairy idea. Um, but obviously this is, um, a lovely bright white and I kind of wanted to keep him kind of on the steampunk aesthetic to kind of make it look like a, a gold cage or a gilded cage so as you can see I am starting to play around with whether I can get away with covering the white um, so at the moment there's just this is just gold coloured ribbon um, satin ribbon that's pinned on it's the perfect width um, I just happen to have a full reel well almost full reel but there's yeah there's quite a bit on there um so yeah i'm just playing around with pinning that on whether i can get away of just stitching that on i could quite quickly run it through the machine because it's just straight lines um and then obviously going the other way along the the uh, horizontal um bands as well and then you can also see i'm just kind of pinning on to play around um some metallic gold kind of lace and trimming that I have in my stash. I have pulled out my, excuse the mess, in the background of my sewing room. She knows this is a busy working sewing room, but yeah. I have uh, pulled out my kind of stash of kind of metallic trims and laces and things, and I'm just going through there um, just to see kind of anything catches my eye, if I've, what I've got that's kind of uh, enough kind of remnants or, or reels and rolls that are left over to um, actually, you know, do what I want to do. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of what I'm doing at the moment. Um, you can also see these coloured ribbons here, um, which are just kind of tied um, through the crinoline. And what I'm doing, I'm just experimenting with if I can pinch, essentially use the, the tension in the ribbon to squeeze the sides of the, um, the cage in. Um, and it gives it a slightly more 18th century pannier feel. Um, so it's a bit of a it's a bit of a cheat, kind of a theatrical cheat. So I could um, obviously I could untie the ribbons and it could still just be a you know a circular crinoline cage, um, or I'd pull the ribbons together and squish the the crinoline and it becomes more of a, an 18th century pannier. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of what I'm doing at the moment. Um, so and I think it's going to work. Um, you know, if I can stitch nice and neatly um, just on the edge, just to catch that ribbon down onto there, I think that's going to potentially work um, and I'm hoping it might not take too long so that's my plan for this afternoon stitch those ribbons on there and then see see where we go from there
Okay, so progress update. I have put the gold onto all of the vertical um, strips on the crinoline. Um, although I did hit a slight snag um, with the horizontal pieces, um, which as you can see here, I am obviously now still experimenting with. Um, so originally I used this same uh, 15 mil ribbon um, and stitched it across the top of the um, the, the horizontal bands, these uh, these ivory tubes here, um, and I thought that was okay until I came to put it on the mannequin and it put it back under tension, um, and it just the, the tension was all wrong and it just completely warped it. Um, the ribbon wouldn't sit flat. I was trying to just kind of stitch it flat onto the um, onto the front of the, the the tubing here, but because this is a rounded tubing, not a flat steel. Um, it, yeah, it just, it just wasn't working, and it just, it was just fighting. Um, the the ribbon and the the tubing were, were fighting with each other, and it was just, yeah, it was just really distorting the shape of the crinoline, and wasn't laying flat, and it just looked awful. Um, so I took that off and kind of went back to the drawing board, and the idea I came up with was um, that I had some 50 mil satin ribbon in my stash and I just kind of here you can see this is an ivory rather than a gold but I was just playing around with if I could just fold a 50 mil piece of ribbon over the top of this tubing and stitch it just down the one side so that the tubing is this tube of ribbon is essentially is loose it's not attached to the the tubing underneath um that actually appears to look quite nice and smart um it also gives me something that i can anchor uh, there's a small um excess um underneath here you can see if i move the pin move the the uh, the braiding um yeah, there's a small excess underneath there that I can actually stitch the this metallic braid to, um, which again looks really nice, and it gets, saves me having to try and fight with stitching anything onto the the tubing channel that's that's underneath here. Um, so that was for that was great. Um, but I decided I needed to order some gold to obviously match the rest of what I'm doing here and trying to achieve this look of kind of a kind of a gilded metal kind of cage. Obviously, it's ribbon, not metal, but you know. <laughs> we, we get the idea um, so yeah so I ordered some more ribbon and it has turned up and as you can see that is not 50 mil wide satin this is 70 mil wide satin um, which is far too big for what I need for this um, and basically looks really rubbish here oh it's the Bin lorry squeaking. Ah, oh. stupid thing. Um, yeah, you can see it's far too wide. Um, it doesn't. It's not hidden by the 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 excess here. It isn't hidden by this trim, and it just looks a bit naff. And also, um, yeah, I think that is showing on camera. The although this is supposed to be the same color gold, obviously these are different batches. Um, these two ribbon colors are slightly different. So, yes. So at the moment, I'm wondering if the universe is telling me to not bother carrying on with this. But I kind of, I got excited because I was really pleased with how it was starting to come together and how it was looking and yeah, and then I've been sort of planning how I'm going to style it and make it look even better. And uh, yeah, I'm kind of, I kind of want to finish this now. Um, so I'm going to be stubborn and persevere with this extra wide gold ribbon and see if I can do something to make it look less less rubbish um, and serve the purpose I want to form. But yeah.
okay, ignoring the fact that this isn't put on the mannequin properly, I've just chucked it on here because it's the end of the day and I'm ready for tea. Um, but I just wanted to show you where we're at. And um, finally, I have got one row of the horizontal uh, banding covered and the metallic braid stitched on. Um, yeah, so I think that is working. Obviously, it needs a bit of tidying up. I need to trim some of those little tails of thread and stuff that are on there. But I think that is looking okay. Um, yeah, getting this through the uh, sewing machine was not fun, 100%. Do not recommend. Um, yeah, it probably would have just been easier for me to make acrylic from scratch at this point, but it is what it is. We're doing this now, so going to carry on because I'm stubborn and I'm determined to get this done and make it look at least half decent. So yes, so far, so good. That's not looking too bad. And I do like how the metallic um, braid and the, the sequins in here are obviously going to catch the light and uh, sparkle and just add to that metallic feel um, that we're kind of emulating with the ribbon. So these are the wings for my clockwork fairy. Uh, I'm quite pleased with how these are turning out. Ooh, they're, a bit, they're a bit top heavy. Uh, however, these did start out live very, very differently. I shall put in a picture here of uh, what they used to look like when I first bought them. Uh, and you can actually see here, here's a clue as to the colour that they were originally. This is one of the original straps from them. And as you can see, the whole of this central box in here was also a uh, luminous Tinkerbell green because these are in fact uh, children's dress up Tinkerbell wings that I bought on holiday in Disneyland a few weeks ago. But for saying that they are children's dress up wings, um, they are actually really good quality and they were actually a very good price. Um, I paid $30 um, including tax, um, I think, or thereabouts. Um, which, you know, I think isn't bad um, when you actually look at what what is in these. I mean, these solid, um, hard plastic uh, wings with beautiful detail in them. Obviously, you've got the, the box in here, uh, which holds the electronics uh, for the LEDs. Um, and then you have um, a button as well, um, which is hidden here in the strap underneath uh, I put one of these little lace flowers on so I can remember which side the <laughs> where I need to press the button. So yeah, so for thirty dollars, I didn't think uh, they were particularly uh, bad price, um, and they just lent themselves perfectly to being steampunked up a little bit. Um, so they weren't quite so a luminous green, and obviously, um, you know, Disney Tinkerbell fairy wings. Um, so yeah, so this is where we're at with them at the moment. Now they're doing a little tiny bit of finishing off. I need to touch up some of the paint um, on the box here. But essentially what we've done is painted the luminous green plastic box. Um, Mr. BLC did a very good job. He completely took them apart, took all the electronics out. Um, there's springs inside here as well because you can actually you can fold these flat um so you feel like for, for travel or storage and things like that so but um yeah they don't move kind of mechanically in any way um but they there are springs in here which helps keep them in place um so yes yeah, so mr blc took that all completely apart for me stripped it all down um and did a lovely job painting them so he has uh, done a dry brush effect um now if you know me i'm i'm not one for, for prop making i'm not a prop making kind of person um but mr BLC, he loves this kind of thing, especially if it involves electronics. So he was more than happy to take these apart, have a fiddle about, figure out how they worked, um, and then paint them up for me. Um, so yeah, so we've dry brushed um, the the box um, in black and gold paint, so it gives that lovely uh, kind of burnished metallic effect. Um, then we've also added a little bit of gold paint just on the um, kind of the sort of central point of the wings here where they join into the box just so that it kind of flows a little bit and it just adds a little bit of interest when the wings aren't lit up during the day it just I don't know it just 
it was just an idea I had that I kind of wanted to try and I thought it looked sort of quite nice with the the gold kind of sort of fading up into the um the the clear plastic of the the other thing I then had to do was um in the center here I mean, you can see that there is um a very distinct um silhouette of uh, Tinkerbell and the Tinkerbell branding um, in the middle of the box here, which obviously I wanted to to hide. Um, and it just so happened that the lace, um, this horrible, horrible lace, which has just been amazing for this project, despite how horrible it is, um, was actually just perfect. I just had enough after doing the hem of uh, the, the crinoline, the panniers. Um, I had about 10 inches, 8 inches, 10 inches left um, with a few of these motifs um, in it and you know that it's just perfect for for finishing off the wings here um, so I have glued this on. Um, we have used just a little bit of Yoohoo glue um, just to anchor this in place. It doesn't have to be stuck really firmly, it's just to anchor it um, so it doesn't sort of fall off. Um, and that has worked really well, other than it has just kind of melted and kind of glooped the paint a little bit. Um, and obviously it's shiny. Um, so what we just need to do is just get a little bit more paint and just touch up um, in here um, just to hide the, the shininess and, and the glue. And then I think that will be absolutely fine. But yeah, I just really love how that just finishes off the effect on here and they look really, really good. Uh, and then for the straps, obviously these were the original straps, luminous green nylon uh, webbing straps with uh, buckles um, and they're kind of a, a tube effect so that you can run the electronics down them for the, for the, the switch for the lights in them. Um, so I kind of had to come up with an idea um, that would work for those. Um, now initially I came up with the idea of a kind of having elasticated straps just to make it easier to get them on and off uh, and this was my first iteration as you can see. Um, so I've made some gold tubing out of that that extra wide satin ribbon that I <laughs> was sent in error um, and I appear to have and I had just enough off to um, play around with uh, doing the the straps for it and I thought you know what since I, I had it it was there um I just had to I just had to use it for the, the straps um it's probably not the best thing it probably won't last uh you know indefinitely um for the sake of at least this event um and getting these done relatively quickly and without having to order new uh, bits of ribbon and supplies um I decided to just use the, the gold satin and I think it's worked relatively well um however the elastic kind of didn't work and I kind of forgot that I'd have to somehow run the the electronics through here, and obviously that's that's just not going to happen. It's just be it was just a mess, and it was getting really complicated. So we got rid of that, um, and I kind of went back to just doing um, flat straps. Um, and as you can see, I have uh, put these little buckles on them. Um, these are just uh, waistcoat buckles um, that I have in stock for when I'm making waistcoats, um, and trousers uh, uh, with adjustable straps on and things like that. Um, and yeah, they're really good because once they're under tension, um, they hold the, the material um, quite snug and tight. So I think um, so the test kind of, sort of whereas I've done them, um, this appears to have worked. And that also means that the, the tubing is nice and flat so I can run the wire um, for the electronics down to here. And as I said, I've just very loosely hand stitched um, one last little bit of this gold lace motif here, just so I know that that's the side with the, with the button in. And yeah, they say I've got the last bit of uh, paint to finish off. These are about, about ready. Um, and that's just the back there with the battery pack. Um, so yeah, I am very, very pleased with how they are looking. They are super cute and they are extra cute when they are lit up. So I think in this package are the floral wreaths that I have ordered to finish off decorating the uh, crinoline pannier situation on my clockwork fairy gown. Um, and yeah, I'm slightly concerned <laughs> that these are going to end up being one of those regret purchases from China. Um, that yeah, they're supposed to be for wreaths in this package. Um, two that are 70 centimeters long and two smaller ones as well um 
yeah, I kind of thought they may have come in a box, but no, they appear to have been shoved in a plastic bag, which has been through the mail delivery system all the way from China. Uh, so I think they're going to be slightly destroyed, if not completely squashed flat. And yeah, this could be a disaster. <laughs> So wish me luck, let's open these and see what we've got and whether they're going to be usable or not. Let's... yikes. Well, they're definitely squished in there, aren't they? <laughs> um, oh my goodness me. Oh, I'll get them up there. Oh, there are two. Well, at least there are two. I will say the colours do look really pretty. Um, perhaps a little more on the grey side, but there are some kind of creamy yellow flowers in here as well, so I'm hoping that it will work overall um, the beautiful look. Yeah, okay, they're not bad, they're not bad, but yes, they are me oh well i will be leaving a certainly will be leaving a five star review on these but uh, i think they will be they will do for the the job in hand and it's a cheaper alternative than the other option which was to go to somewhere like um dunnell mill or hobbycraft or somewhere like that here in the uk or the range um and buy individual flowers um or garlands and kind of make up my own wreaths um but i could just see that very quickly spiraling into a lot more cost than these now these weren't necessarily cheap um it has cost me nearly yeah nearly 50 pounds for the the two sets of wreaths um i mean i thought 30 pounds for the like a, a, a pair wasn't too bad um but i really need two lot two sets to um to, to balance the the gown out and i want i'm hoping that i'm going to be able to use one of these the smaller reeves um to wear on my head <laughs> as you do um just to kind of complete the the overall look and sort of hide or make it you know less that i have to do a more extravagant hairstyle with my hair so because that ain't happening <laughs> hairstyling is not my forte so yeah i was like oh i'll just stick some flowers on and hide it that'll be fine 